Hey guys, such a warmonger here, and you're watching Three vs Three Eastern Fortress. Um, player versus player scenario. And you got the West team players four, five, six here starting as the Mamluks, and you got the East team players one, two, three starting as the Western Kingdoms, I believe. I'm not. Could be mistaken. We'll check it out later. Uh, anyway, so the objective of this game is to gather 1,500 victory points. The way you do that is by capturing monuments. So there's seven monuments in the map, and Age of Empires 2 replays change the architecture for some reason. It's a bug. So watch this. Boink! And so that's one of the monuments. That's the southeast. And this is a northeast, northwest monument. Not sure this will change. That one changes because uh, player five must be humans. And southwest, see this monument didn't used to look like that. And you got the south and the north. So all of those monuments I just showed, the ones that are not in the center, give plus two victory points every 15 seconds. So if you're going to try to get 1,500 victory points to win for your team, those monuments give you victory points. The only monument that's a little bit different is the center. I'll explain that later on. But this one gives you plus three victory points every 15 seconds. Yeah, and that's the whole objective of the game. And now we're just going to go into the in-game capture. And you can see that the victory points are here on the top right. You can see who's who's got what. And you can see the time of day, which I will also explain later when it comes into play. So as I was saying, the East team, <clears throat> they are the Western Kingdom. So the East team, player one, that's me, such a warmonger. And player two is Kevin, uh, the Kingdom of Jerusalem. The Sib names are just uh, for decorations, basically. So I'm the Kingdom of France, player one, and player two is the Kingdom of Jerusalem. Then player three, the Holy Pope, fittingly, are the Papal States. Yes. So even though they have different Sib names, it's all basically the Western yes. Kingdoms. And then over here on the west side, on the west team, we've got player four, Snafu, Mamluk Army of Aleppo. We got player five, Rivella Jones, Mamluk Army of Alexandria. And player six, Marnius, France, Mamluk Army of Medina. So these are all you know, different sib names, but they are basically the Mamluks. So everybody on the same team will get the same units. They may be uh, different names, even the units may have different names, but all of the stats are the same. So it looks like the respective teams have captured their monuments on each side. Um, Snafu is working on opening up these gate, this gate. Because he wants access to this monument in south. And the Holy Pope. Looks like he's just scouting this. But he's not trying to open this gate yet. Kevin. Is trying to open this gate up. Kevin and me. Such a warmonger. So. Um, it's 3pm already. So how does this game work? Well basically you start off with 10 villagers. And one scout unit each. So these are the scout units. So uh, the scout units are useful for trying to capture the monuments in the very beginning. So this is the Western Kingdom scout unit. And this is the this is the Mamluk scout unit. So if you notice they are the same stats. So if you look at the stats over here same stats. Tax speed and everything. So it's basically just a skin change. It's the same for uh, the basic unit from the Levy Swordsman. Also the same stats. Same for the Pikeman. Same for the Archers. 
So your most basic units in the beginning um, are pretty much equal. As for balancing purposes. Now different uh, civs, uh, different factions might have um, different levy units. Um, but in this case, the Western Kingdoms are basically the same as the Mamluks in the early game. Snafu has broken his gate and he's sending his scout to capture the monument while sending the rest of his infantry to try to uh, stop us basically. But we were already able to stop the breakthrough of the south also. We've got a little battle coming up. Alright. These are basically at this point of the game is just numbers, so Kevin has more men, more swordsmen than Snafu, so he's probably gonna win this engagement. So once you do capture the south, Hasha Shin Fidai are available to both the Mamluks and the Western Kingdoms. And their special thing is they can see at night. So they're not super strong. I mean, they do have a fast attack speed. You might think that this is a very low attack value, but their attack speed is fast and it's armor piercing. So they are stronger than your average swordsman. They are um, evacuating the location because I think Snafu knows that he can't quite take this yet from Kevin. All right. So Kevin has taken the control of the South Monument, and that gives the East team access to these taverns. So eventually, you might see some mercenary units also. Snafu is quickly going to try to take it back with some infantry, though. So he created these horse archers from the support tent. So these would be your first gold units, aside from anything you. Train at the tavern. Going on up here. Just a little cavalry engagement. Nothing much to report there. Now, these archers in their projectiles have to be careful. First of all, are you noticing that their projectiles are not really hitting anything? Because they're hitting the building before they hit the units. So that's one difference in this map is the projectiles hit trees, buildings, other units, and so you can take cover behind things. Still not hitting them, still taking cover. So it's useful to hide behind walls and things like that. Another thing about projectiles is uh, they do friendly fire even on your own units. We have to be careful, especially crossbowmen. So archer, horse archers have a... Well, first of all, your foot archers have a very high firing arc. And then horse archers have a lower firing arc. And then crossbowmen have the lowest firing arc. So it's the straightest line for crossbowmen. So they have the highest chance of uh, doing friendly fire. Looks like I capture the north monument. Didn't used to look like this, but uh, thank you, Age of Empires, for making it look weird. Alright. So, Snafu. I think I heard him make an Imam. If I'm not mistaken. So, everybody gets monk units, monk type units. And they can be built, they can be trained at the different monuments. And the Mamluks and the Western Kingdoms are the only. Uh, sieves that can make more than just the monk type units from the monuments. They can also make Hashashin. So, it's night time and it's 9 o'clock. What that means is their visibility has gotten much lower. And not only that, they can only see their own units. So this is where the Hashashin come into play and they're very useful in terms of maybe like giving line of sight for your range units. 
might also notice that these guys are running away. Because uh, almost all of the ranged units have a minimum range of 3. So Kevin has unsupported archers here, which are probably all going to die. Because in this game, it's trying to be historically accurate. Archers usually have support. This guy's gonna be, uh... <laughs> yeah, so, um, monk, monk type units are not really supposed to be used for battle. Because they only have three range, and everybody has heresy. Okay. So, the first gold units you would have access to, which would let you pick these guys, or make these guys, they come from the support tent. So the support tent gives you your gold units. Yes. And not only that, for most civilizations, you have to pick between a certain type of unit. So for the Mamluks, they always have access to their horse archers. But they do have to choose between um, Arab Light Cavalry or Jablan Lancers. And that decision uh, follows you through the rest of the game. Looks like the Holy Pope sent some gold units. Uh, for the Western Kingdoms, it would basically be choosing between sergeants and uh, mounted sergeants or light cavalry and horse archers. So the Holy Pope picked the heavy unit type, and so he ends up with these sergeants. They're strong but slow. You can see that they're going to be massacred by these guys. Once again, if you look at the uh, line of sight of Snafu, Oh, well, not like that. Let's, let's do Marnius. Marnius has his ninja, well, not ninja, Hashashin, providing a adequate line of sight during the nighttime. And if you want to see and compare, this is what the Holy Pope can see. His line of sight is very low. Now, this is an Age of Empires bug by Microsoft. I don't know why you can see everything here. That's really annoying, to be honest. But yeah. So Marnius, these Arab horse archers are always available in the support tent. It's just that you pick between light and heavy. So Rebella Jones gathering some Jublan Lancers. This bar is basically a charge attack bar of 25, plus 25. Nafu making some Karanis. So these come from the command tent which is the unit making structure for your strongest units in the game. So for the Mamluks, they have the Karanis, which are the, their strongest infantry. And then if he made Kasaki, you know, that would be the strongest cavalry. I don't see any Kasaki yet, which is interesting. Now, let's talk about, like, Vils. So, Vils come from the Lumber Camp. Actually, this is a Labor Camp. And you train Vils here. And you only need about 30 to 40 Vils because they're only really good for Lumber, for Wood. It's almost a waste to make more than that because you're not going to need that much Wood throughout the whole game. You know, that's better used for army population space. Nafu is uh, making a big play at night time. He's attacking this uh, southeastern monument. So you can see like the horse archers have a longer line of sight at night time than the... Um... So these guys only have two line of sight. You can see that. You guys have five. One, two, three, four, five. But still, you know, it's way shorter than the average 20 during the daytime. We got a big battle here. An allied contingent of heavy cavalry, levy infantry, and some light cavalry. This is what Kevin sees. So, the reason you would pick light cavalry is they are f just as fast and just as good at closing the distance towards like horse archers. So, that one. Light Cavalry guy had disrupted this whole force, you noticed. 
Because uh, if you pick the heavy cavalry, they're they're just slower, and then they can be kited e much easier by the horse archer. Meanwhile, uh, on the northwest side, we have me, such a warmonger, and I'm taking control of the northwest, trying to cut off their uh, supplies here. And I decided on my the strongest infantry. So these guys are trained from the command tent. They also have a plus fifteen attack, charge attack. You can see that right here. Unfortunately, I didn't realize I was going to face a big mass of horse archers. And at night time, the only saving grace is that it's night time, so he can't really easily see me. But once it comes to daytime, uh, I'm going to be in trouble. And it's daytime now, so... And since it's daytime, I think I'm going to switch to capture age. So here's the problem. I mean, these infantry are very strong, but they're obviously slow. And then that's that's a problem. Meanwhile, Kevin is being utterly destroyed. He's got mostly a, a group of a force made of just almost all horse archers or his gold units. Now, yeah, everybody, all of the range units, almost all of the range units have minimum range, so... If you want to make these horse archers effective, you gotta move them around and kite. Because once the enemy closes the distance, they're not gonna be as useful. Kevin's being destroyed, his camp, his encampment towards the southeast is... has been captured by the west team. Meanwhile, I've decided I'm never going to catch these guys, I don't think. And these guys were not cheap either, because like I made sergeants and I made knights. So, I decided, you know what, I'm just going to raid bills. I'm never going to catch these guys. I'm just going to use my crossbowmen to try to like whittle down these uh, horse archers. Meanwhile, the, our entire base is in danger of... Also, unfortunately for Kevin, his two most expensive buildings, the command tent, this thing, and the support tent, are in danger of being destroyed. That's unfortunate. So I'm not even going to do that much damage with this infantry, but, you know, I wanted to make at, at least make my money back somehow. So basically the same thing's happening on both sides of the map except these guys are doing a better job. And I decided to go for infantry. I finally decided to help Kevin out by uh, sending some heavy cab. So these guys, these are like the most expensive uh, units that the Western Kingdoms can make. And then for the support tent, these are like the other gold units, the cavalier looking units. This is a pretty big force to have to deal with. Meanwhile, I'm still raiding some bills here. But really, I'm only affecting red while... Um, this is affecting both blue and uh, green and teal. Now, fortunately, the Holy Pope was able to build a small proxy camp. Which... And even built some siege ramps. He's also killing the expensive command tent and support tent of Nafu. This is probably why um, this game is still going on because like the Holy Pope is uh, raiding this encampment. 
Now we got one scout cavalry. Messing people up over here. Probably should have fought back, to be honest. We're finally cleaning up the force over here. Oh, help Kevin out with sending heavy cav and crossbowmen. So you can see, like, I, I friendly fired my own men. That was a friendly fire kill. You gotta be careful with the crossbowmen especially. So this area was finally cleared out of enemies. And... Snafu and Ravella Jones are falling back. But the Holy Pope is... Really doing a number on this side of the map. You can see this. Uh, this swordsman isn't doing as much damage towards this battering ram because battering rams have their melee armor is stored, and then some. They are expensive though, and they have to be built on the field. Snafu is finally deciding to- Oh! What happened there? So basically what happens is if you are across the river So the west team, when they cross this river If you lose too many units uh, If you have a kill deficit of too many units uh, They can run away, they can lose morale and run away That's what happened there. So basically, everybody has, once you cross the river and you have less than 80 units on a certain flank, if the enemy kills more of your units than you kill of theirs and it ends up with 30 more units, then your units will run away. They're gonna run away all the way back here. And then they'll be distributed evenly to all the teammates. Got an engagement here. Some harassment going on. I built these guys. These sergeant looking guys. These are Norman Axemen. I, I made them from the tavern over here. And their thing is they can uh, block range attacks. Three range attacks. There's gonna be a lot of friendly fire here, I expect. <laughs> just a lot of friendly friendly fire. Now the Holy Pope is doing a number on Ravella Jones here on the west, southwest. Thankfully, he has some heavy cavalry that do a decent job of killing weak heavy units. So now the Holy Pope's men. He crossed the river, and he lost too many units all at once, so his men are retreating on the left flank. Meanwhile, you've got Marnius up on the north, trying to take the north away from us, but uh, we've got too many Norman Axemen. But so even though, actually, even though he can block three arrows, it's just too many archers. They are pretty good though. They are pretty good against range units. Alright, so the Holy Pope had to fall back. You can see they're still retreating all the way back to the corner. You can see these guys, so this is how the retreating works. They're running away. And then they get in distributed evenly. Now you can't just ignore them or else your supply routes are going to get blocked. My little group again. They finally found uh, the Holy Pope's proxy. Finally destroying it. Now we've got a levy battle here. 
Now, levy units are good because you can make a lot of them all at once because they're, you know, each tent, each levy tent can make them. But you shouldn't really rely on them too much because the fact that they're weak means that uh, if you lose too many all at once, your morale can go low. That's why gold units, like these guys, if you can afford the gold units, you should go for the gold units. Going on here. Got a nice little force of archers. Now they are deciding to take back the south. I'm actually also surprised that we haven't taken this back. Southeast. Ooh! This onager needs to be taken care of. Looks like I've been leaving my guys alone. Uh, these super strong knights can also block three three range attacks and they have regeneration so they're nearly immune to like regular archer fire that's kind of funny marnie is still trying to get the north but i think that was a lot of friendly fire to be honest was the reason why his cavalry archers all died I think all of these guys were friendly firing their own men, and then he ended up losing all of his horse archers, which is unfortunate for him. Arnius with the uh, accidental friendly fire. Oh, I killed my own guy too. Do you see that? You gotta be careful with that friendly fire for sure. These guys still soaking up arrows. Absolutely chilling. They don't care. Kind of like the real knights of back in the day. They, uh, there's some anecdotes of some knights coming back from battle looking like pincushions from all of the uh, arrows that hit them. Oh, is it night time? Coming close, getting close to night time. Once night time comes, I'm gonna switch back to in-game Microsoft. So these are guys are good, but they're not invincible. So they are being killed by like the levy infantry, but they can take out quite a few before they die. Let's talk about the center um, the fortress. The fortress is purchased in your support tent. With, for 5,000 food and 5,000 wood. And you can only do it once. So if the enemy team gets it first, that's it. Basically. Um, it's useful because of the plus 3 uh, victory points every 15 seconds and access to markets. Markets are pretty strong. You can get rid of your gold, uh, your food, and then exchange it for gold. Vice versa, things like that. So those obuk looking guys, they come from the markets. You can also train super weak, cheap units from the markets. They're good for like emergency situations. So let's take stock of who's got what. So the West team has one, two, three, four victory points. And all of them give food through the supply carts. When the supply carts reach the monuments, then they give a certain amount of food. Uh, the East team has only three. One, two, three. Basically, it's uh, eight victory points every 15 seconds versus seven victory points every 15 seconds. Got a big engagement here. But these are cheap units, you have to remember. If you are able to gather a large number of stronger units, they are very good at cutting down large numbers of very weak units. That's where the morale comes in. You have to be fairly sure that you can you can fight your battles nearly evenly at least. So Gray just lost a whole bunch of men. 
because they were all just levy. You always need to support your uh, your armies with gold units. If you want any chance? So Kevin has recovered, and now he's making a play for ooh for the northwest. There's a big engagement. Oh, it is nighttime though. So, if we look at Kevin's... This is what Kevin sees. He should be using his horse archers. He should be putting them in spread formation. And he should be using attack ground. I forgot to mention that every ranged unit has the attack ground ability. Instead, he's just running them around and not firing. Which is unfortunate. Not only that, it looks like Revella Jones has a large mass of heavy cavalry protecting the northwest. So the Karanis Lancers are the strongest units that the, uh, the Mamluks can field. They have a plus 25 charge attack as well. So, failed attempt by Kevin to capture the Northwest, but at least it kept them busy. So, it's 12 a.m., so midnight, up here on the, on the uh, scoreboard. So we figure, well, we control only three monuments. But there's only a one point deficit, so the West team is only very slowly catching up. Okay, we got a little lull the battle. Okay. What happened here? Kevin rebuilt his uh, whole force, finally able to build a support tent. Going for horse archers. And you got Snafu. Looks like he wants to make a proxy base. Take a look at Snafu's uh, point of view. Wait a minute. Orange is losing units? To whom? Oh, I didn't realize that Orange uh, sent some men here. Hmm. Okay. Oh, we got uh, the Holy Pope sending how did he get his men here? Not sure how he got his men here, that's very interesting. I mean, these guys are strong, but they're not gonna kill all of this heavy cavalry. They are pretty cool though. Alright. So, we got a battle over here with Snafu. More levy infantry. I mean, this is intimidating, I will admit. But it would be more intimidating if Snafu used his 3,420 gold to make very powerful gold units. So, let's see what, why he's not doing that. Does he have a command tent? I mean, he has enough gold to make, he could use the tavern to make gold units. Oh my gosh, I left a hole here. Oh no, that's not food skate. Hmm. Interesting. So here's a Hashashin, they have a very good line of sight at night time. 
Dawn is approaching. What is this? Uh, looks like Marnius is doing some raiding. Ah, uh, let's see. Okay. Got. So it's nighttime. So I was looking for Snafu's army. This I'm the blue player. Because I was trying to see. I didn't want to commit all of my heavy cap because these are my very expensive gold units. What happened there? Ooh, Kevin. Kevin raining down the arrows. That's very good. Yeah, I didn't want to engage until I knew I had some levy units with me so they can tank some shots. Now, when you're right beside this gate, the gate's gonna take some of the projectiles. projectiles are gonna hit some of that gate some of the projectiles are gonna hit that gate Ooh, that was a good shot by Kevin I think he is using attack ground that's the name of the game is trying to predict where they're gonna go and then shooting in that direction here's one of the big bigger battles between levy units and elite units Pikemen are good against horsemen, but not this many horsemen. I mean, they are cost efficient, but they won't necessarily win. Basically, they have been trapped and destroyed. Oh, try and destroy the expensive structure here. Still got these annoying archers here, finally being dealt with. I'm not sure if they've been here the whole game, to be honest. They don't stand a chance against these Norman Axemen, though. And... The Holy Pope just lost his command temp. Very good move by Marnius. They still control the southeast though, which is interesting. So these like longbone looking guys, they do have the same stats as the the weak looking archer guys. I prefer crossbowmen, but that's just my preference. Even though crossbowmen have a very low attack speed. Finally captured the southeast. Took very long. The Holy Pope sending more uh, units up here. Alright, let's take a look at the... Let's go back in the game and then take a look at this. So it's 1245 to 1152. But now, beginning of the end for the West team because East team finally captured this monument back. Oh wait, no, no. It still belongs to the West team. That's interesting. So the Western team is still in this. Unfortunately... They are being raided again by the Holy Pope. Causing general chaos and havoc. So this, why are these guys walking slowly? Well, the command tent has special powers. And one of them is shield wall, which will make you walk slower, but... You know, you'll be uh, more immune to range attacks. You got Kevin making another attempt at the Northwest Monument. Now theoretically, he should just attack ground into this mass with his horse archers. Just attack ground right here, around here. You can win this engagement if he does that. 
Unfortunately, that's not what he's doing. And so this massive horse archers is actually might win. What's this? The Holy Pope took this Southwest Monument. That's interesting. You should be moving. The way you use horse archers is you fire and move, fire and move, fire and move. Instead, he's like closing the distance for some reason. He's maybe even killing his own horse archers. Yeah, that's not gonna work because the attack speed of these of these foot archers is faster than the attack speed of the horse archers. That's unfortunate. Finally deciding to take the Southeast Monument. Okay, he's losing. Now I'm gonna use a... There, if you notice, these guys are moving faster. Because I use my command tent to use the... Uh, the gallop command for horses. So it's like, like a horse sprint, so they move... They have plus 0.25 movement speed. I'm not really afraid of these uh, levy units because I know my heavy cavalry can take care of them easily. But I do decide to fall back. What's going on here? Oh. Player Orange's center has routed. But he has not. Now that must be a bug. I don't know why. You know what probably happened? Is he probably had like a unit on this side. And it routed. But this is part of the left flank. So that's why you didn't see any units routing. They, they just died. Immediately. I'm using spread formation to try to avoid like ranged attacks. Holy Pope still destroying a bunch of... Uh, Here's another mistake from the west side. Like, they relied too much on levy units. They made way too many tents. You don't need this many tents. <laughs> I mean, levy units are cool because they're cheap, but they're also weak, and gold units will slaughter them, as, as I showed with these guys. You really want to balance your army. Combined arms is uh, is rewarded in this game. These guys just they just got lazy. I mean, how much how much gold does Snafu has? He has. Earlier, he could have made a support. Ah, uh, he does have a command ten. Snafu has a command. He should make. He should have made stronger units. That's unfortunate. All right, attempt number 88 to try to take the Southeast Monument back. I am using Shield Wall here, so you can notice that they're not taking as much damage. Almost just one damage per hit. I'm using shield wall. That's one of the ways you can use shield wall successfully. Got Kevin with some levy units. Fighting pure swordsmen. The pure swordsman army would win this because like they're better than... These pikemen, only use them if you notice a lot of enemy cavalry. Swordsmen are a superior levy unit if, it, if there's no cavalry involved. And that's it. That's the that's the game. So, fairly close game. Things I would say is, uh, if the West team used more gold units and didn't make as many, like this many tents, 
you wouldn't be as easily tempted <laughs> to make huge gigantic masses of levy units which basically just lose to larger masses of gold units like this um also they probably should have like attacked the center they, they left the center alone which which let the east team hold their uh victory point advantage for most of the game that's wow okay so i killed a lot see you know what that is that's from killing levy units with gold units that's all that is i re i knew what my cavalry was capable of i knew what my infantry was capable of like the, the strong ones holy pope did a really good job also uh kevin kevin's not bad um I mean, the West team all throughout did a pretty good job, to be honest. I mean, they have a, almost an even units killed, like a, not a bad kill to death ratio. It really came down to the, uh, the strategy. So it was a strategy of using levy units to try to overwhelm, which didn't work out once everyone had the gold. Especially since they knew we had markets. And we, they knew we had the center, and they didn't try to push for the center. That was a mistake. Other than that, it was a pretty good game. Back and forth at certain points, especially when Kevin's uh, encampment here was destroyed. That's it. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.